Hello everyone. Today we move to chapter two in computer system architecture course. This is a comprehensive revision chapter for some topics covered in digital design course. These topics include ICs, integrated circuits, decoders, multiplexers, registers, shift registers, binary counters, and memory unit. I published videos on each of these topics in the digital design course, so you can watch these videos for more details. First, integrated circuits. An integrated circuit, IC, is a small silicon semiconductor crystal called a chip containing the electronic components for the digital gates. The various gates are interconnected inside the chip to form the required circuit. The chip is mounted in a ceramic or plastic container and connections are welded by thin gold wires to external pins to form the integrated circuit. Integrated circuits are broadly classified by degree of integration and the circuit technology to which they belong. Degree of integration is defined as the number of electronic components contained in the chip. In a small scale integrated circuits, the number is about 10. In medium scale integrated circuits, less than 200. In large scale integrated circuits, about 1,000. And in very large scale integrated circuits, more than 1,000. And the number of electronic components contained in the very large scale integrated circuits may reach 100,000 or even millions of electronic components in the chip. Integrated circuits are also classified by the circuit technology to which they belong. The circuit technology is referred to as a digital logic family. Each logic family has its own basic electronic circuit upon which more complex digital circuits and functions are developed. The basic circuit in each technology is either an AND or an OR or an inverter gate. The most popular logic families are TTL, ACL, MOS, and CMOS. TTL is a widespread logic family that has been in operation for many years and is considered as standard. TTL logic family was an evolution of a previous technology that used diodes and transistors for the basic NAND gate. This logic family was called DTL. The diodes were replaced by transistors to improve the circuit technology. ECL emitter coupled logic family has an advantage in systems requiring high speed operation and they are used mainly in supercomputers. MOS or metal oxide semiconductor logic family is suitable for circuits that need high component density and complementary MOS is preferable in systems requiring low power consumption. This is a comparison table of the basic logic families. For example, the high logic level in the TTL is plus three volt, and the low logic level is 0.2 volt. And the fan out is 10, and the speed in nanoseconds is 10. Fan in is defined as the number of inputs to the gate. For example, here fan in equals two, and here fan in equals four. Fan out is defined as the maximum number of inputs that the output of single logic gate can feed. For example, here the fan out equals two, and here the fan out is four. To 
find the pan out. For example, in standard TTL, here we have 400 microampere, and the minimum current value for each of the inputs should be 40 microampere. So if we divide 400 by 40, then the number of gates that a single gate can feed equals to 10. This is the pan out in the standard TTL logic family. Next, we move to decoders. Decoder is a combinational logic circuit with usually n inputs and maximum two to the power n outputs. We say that we have two by two to the power n decoder. For example, two to four, three to eight, four to 16 decoder. Here is the circuit diagram for a three to eight line decoder with enable input. As you see, if the enable is zero, then all the outputs are zeros. However, if the enable is one in all these cases, then only one of the outputs will be one active depending on the input values. For example, if the input is 0, 1, 1, then D3 will be 1, and all the other outputs will be zeros. Decoder is just an array of AND gates, where encoder is an array of OR gates. Here, D0 equals 1. If we have 0, 0, 0, here, D1 equals 1, and all the remaining outputs are zeros if the input is 0, 0, 1, and D7 here equals 1 if the input is 1, 1, 1. Here is the circuit diagram for 2 to 4 line decoder with NAND gates. If the enable input is 1, then all the outputs are one, regardless of the inputs A0, A1. However, if E is zero, then only one of the outputs will be active. For example, if the inputs are zero, one, here, zero, one, then we'll have here D1 equals zero, and all the other outputs are ones. Decoders can be constructed using fewer decoders. For example, to construct a 3 to 8 decoder, we can use 2 to 4 decoders. Here, two inputs are applied to each 2 by 4 decoder, and the third input is applied in its normal form to the enable input of one decoder and in its complement form to the second decoder. For example, if the input is 101, one, then all these outputs are zeros, and here the enable is 1, so zero, 01 will be selected, which is here D5, and all the others are zeros. In the same manner, we can implement 4 by 16 decoder using 2 by 4 decoders or 3 by 8 decoders. Next, encoders. An encoder is a digital circuit that performs the inverse operation of a decoder. Usually, an encoder has 2 to the power n inputs and n outputs. So we say 2 to the power n by n encoder. The output lines generate the binary code corresponding to the input value. Only one of the inputs should be 1, and all the other inputs are zeros. For example, this is the truth table for octal to binary encoder. 
D0 is 1, then the output is 0, 0, 0. If D1 is 1, then 0, 0, 1. And if D7 is 1, then the output will be 1, 1, 1. Here you can imagine that you have an octal keyboard. So when you press the octal digit, for example, six, then the output is one, one, zero, which is the equivalent to the octal digit six. From the truth table, A0 equals two, D1 or D3 or D5 or D7, a1 equals D2 or D3 or D6 or D7 and A2 equals to D4 or D5 or D6 or D7. Using these expressions, it's very easy to draw the circuit diagram for the octal to binary encoder. Next, multiplexer. Multiplexer is a combinational logic circuit that has many inputs and one output. One of these inputs is transferred to the output depending on the selection lines. So we say that we have four by one multiplexer. If the number of inputs is eight, then we need the three selection lines. Here on zero, zero select I zero, is transferred to the output. On zero one, I one is transferred to the output. And here we have the function table. On zero zero, Y, the output equals to I zero. On zero one, select I one is transferred to the output. On one zero, I two is transferred to the output. And on one one, select I three is transferred to the output. From the function table, it's easy to derive the expression for y, i0, not s1, not s0, or i1, not s1, s0, or i2, s1, not s0, or i3, s1, s0. Using this logical expression for Y, we can draw the circuit diagram for a four to one line multiplexer. We need four AND gates. We apply to each AND gate one of the inputs with the proper selection lines. Next registers. A register is a group of flip flops with each flip-flop capable of storing one bit of information. So if we have n bit register, we need n flip-flops. In addition to the flip-flops, a register may have combinational gates that perform certain data processing tasks. Here is the circuit diagram for a four-bit register that accepts the inputs I0 through I3. And these flops are triggered on positive edge clock pulse. In this circuit diagram, as you see, we haven't any control function to load the register. Usually registers are load input to direct them to accept the input data. The transfer of new information into a register is referred to as loading the register. If all the bits are loaded at the same time, then we say that the loading is done in parallel. Here is the circuit diagram for a four bit register with parallel load implemented using deep flip flops. To explain how this circuit functions, I split it one stage from the circuit so if load is zero, here we have zero, and here we have the Q of T. So Q of T plus one equals Q of T, meaning store. However, if load is one, 
here we'll have one. So here we have not load zero. And here we have one and it with I, input I. So Q of T plus one, here I equals to I. Meaning that the bit applied to the input is stored in the flip flop. So back to the circuit, if load is zero, no change. And if load is one, then these inputs are stored into the register. Next shift registers. Here is a four bit shift register. The serial input is stored in this flip flop. The content of this flip flop is shifted right, one position, etc. So if we originally have one zero one zero, then on the rising edge of the clock pulse, the serial input is transferred here. Suppose, for example, it's zero. This bit is shifted here, zero, and this bit here, and this bit is shifted out, serial output. So the new contents of the register is zero one zero one. Here is the circuit diagram for a bi-directional shift register with parallel load that works according to the following function table. If the mode control is zero, zero, store, and as you see, on zero, zero, the zero input of the max is transferred to the output. So to the zero input, we, the, we connect the output of the flip flop here in all stages. So in zero, zero select in all flip flops, a Q of T plus one equals a Q of T. On zero, one select the input one of each max is a transfer to the output. And here we have shift right. The serial input is transferred to the first flip flop here, and the contents of this flip flop is transferred to the next flip flop here, and this flip flop here to the next, etc. And the last bit is shifted out from the register, shift out. And for example, one one parallel load on one one this input of the multiplexer is transferred to the output and stored in the flip flop. And as you see, this input accepts the external input to the register. So these inputs will be stored in the register. And I think it's easy for you to follow the shift lift operation. Next counters. This is the circuit diagram for a four bit synchronous binary counter. It counts from zero, 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 etc. to one, 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 one and repeat. Remember that on each count, this bit should be complemented. So the count enable is applied to both JK inputs of the first flip flop. Now regarding this flip flop, it changes its state whenever the first flip flop switches from one to zero. Here the case, and here, etc. And the same manner, the third flip flop, when this flip flop switches from one to zero, it should switch its state. And the same thing for the last. So we apply the count enable with and it with A0 to the first flip flop. This way we count from zero 
0001-2111 and again to 0000. Four bit synchronous binary counter can be implemented using T flip flops as well and in different ways. Here is a four bit binary counter with parallel load and a clear input. The circuit has a clear input, load input, and increment. If the load is one, then these inputs are transferred to the register. If load is zero and we have count, then the register functions as a counter. Next count will be produced. And on clear, all the flip-flops are clear to zero. I leave it for you as an exercise to derive the function table for this circuit and follow how it works if load is zero or one, if increment is zero or one, and on the clear input. Next random access memory, RAM is considered as an array of registers or locations. In RAM, we can read and write. So we have the control read, write, input. If we have two to the power K locations, we need K bits in the address line to address each location. RAM has N data input lines and N data output lines, where N is the size of each location. ROM read-only memory, usually we have only one control signal read. We cannot write into ROM. And again, if we have two to the power K locations, we need K bits to address each location. And here is the general RAM and ROM structures, as you see. In RAM, we have a read-write control. In ROM, we have only read. And in both cases, the address is applied to the address register, here memory address register, in order to read the location if the control is read, or to write the datum applied to the memory buffer register if the control is right. However, in ROM, we apply the address and only read control, and the output of the location is applied to the output. There are different types of ROM, mask ROM, programmable read-only memory, EEPROM, and EEPROM. And I published a video on ROM and the types of ROM you can watch it. This was a comprehensive revision of Chapter 2, Morris Mano Computer System Architecture. If you have any comments or questions, this is my email. Please do not hesitate to write. For today, that's all. Thank you.